guys, what's going on? It's Skunk Zero here, and um, I'm coming at you today with a life story. So, in this life story, I'm going to be talking about <laughs> the crazy old man who thinks he knows everything, and the events leading up to me finding out how he thinks he knows everything. Well, it all started a couple years ago. I was out at my grandparents' house. They live out in the country. I store my dirt bike there, and sometimes when um, I'm visiting and whatnot, if it's a nice day, they'll offer, you know, yo, do you want to go ride your dirt bike? And I'll be like, sure, cool, if I feel like it. This time, I, it was a really nice day out. It was around March break. We were having a really early spring. And it was really hot out. So I got on my bike, and I just started riding around the field behind their house like I usually do. And um, I did that for a bit. Um, went a little bit over to one other side and uh, rode a little trail for a bit and you know, I was just kind of going fast and stuff there was no like super 360 dirt bike scopes happening but like um, you know I was just having a good time and um, until it started to rain and it started to rain it, it just started torrential downpouring just for a little bit it was supposed to pass over soon so I put my bike away in the garage and I went inside and just hung out for a bit waited for the rain to stop and um, it stopped and I I knew that the field that had just like winter corn still on it would still be wet but I didn't really care because it was all like a leaf like stuff on the surface so I just started riding everything was going good it was a little slippery but I nothing I couldn't handle I'm a pretty experienced rider well not like super experienced but experienced enough anyways so, <laughs> I start riding, and I go around the first bend, it's a little muddy and stuff, I get a bit of mud on my bike, well, a lot of mud on my bike, and a bit of mud on me, and I go around the second bend, everything's good, because there's a giant tree there, it shielded most of it, I had some really good grip there, and I pretty much, and there's a bunch of solar panels hanging over this one side of the field, and the rain must have been coming down at an angle, because it wasn't wet under a bit of it, so I rode that. And I picked up some good speed because I hadn't felt that traction in a while. So I built up this good speed and then <laughs> once the field came around and there was no more of these solar panels because it came, it became like a wide ravine in between, um, I tried to brake for the corner and it just didn't, it just would not break. So I ended up going super fast over this giant mound of dirt where I slide off the back of my bike and just proceed to d pull the throttle even more. Um, this is where I messed up. I should have tapped the brakes, and I, I know. I should have stomped on them, not just once, but just kept on pushing them. But, and I should have just let go. But I didn't, I was holding on for dear life. I did not know, it, it, I, it caught me right off guard. So I ended up just going over this dirt mound, catching some air, pretty much, so I'm full Superman on this bike now. Once I, I catch some air off the bike, there's some air in between me and the bike once I fly off that hill, and as soon as I land, it just knocks the complete wind of me. And then I look up, and guess what's right in front of me? A line of trees. A freaking line of trees. Um, and I end up just smashing this tree, flipping over, pr pretty much getting myself stuck in between these two trees, and just demolishing the one side of this tree. Um, and I was pretty scared, not, not for my bike, not for me, even though I hurt a lot everywhere from head to toe. But there's this old man here who, um, whenever my dad used to stay out there sometimes with um, his dog at the time, my dog Max, um, he would just walk it down the field, down the little side of the field, and then just come back because the farmer gave us permission to use the side of the field so as long as we didn't cut through it and destroy anything. Anyways, well, this one time, this crazy old man who thought he owned this thing, this field, decides to grab a pellet gun and shoot at them, and then when my dad comes over to ask him why he's shooting at them, he threatens to hit my dog with a shovel. So my dad pretty much said, okay, goodbye, and he just left, and he went back. That was a couple years before this incident, this incident. Anyways, so I do that, and he wasn't home. 
So I was really lucky. So I ended up riding a bit later. And then I'm just, I'm riding a bit later after that whole thing. I realigned my bike and everything. And I'm just riding around a bit later. It's getting like kind of dusk. I come around that bend right where his house is. And him and his dog are just standing there. And he just gives me that finger and he's like, hey, come here. And he just waves me in. So I stop and I'm like, can I help you? And he's like, do you have permission to be riding on this field? And I'm like, y yeah. He's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Why would, why would I not be sure? He's like, because you look like the type of kid who would lie a lot, aren't you? You're, you're Warren's son, aren't you? I'm like, sure, yeah, why? Why does that matter? Because Warren wasn't very nice to me. And you seem like the kind of guy who wouldn't be very nice to me either. I'm like, okay, dude, I'm being nothing but respectful. You need to chill. You need to calm your tots, bro. So anyways, so he just says, okay, whatever. I'll talk to your grandparents because my grandparents are the one who are friends with the farmer who owns this field. He lives across the street, past the field. They know him, they became friends with him. I'm allowed to ride there now. So he can't really interrogate me much more. So he just says, okay, you can go along. I do a couple more laps and then I pull in for dinner. Anyways, during this conversation, he kept going on and on about how his family used to own this thing. And I kept on replying, well, you don't anymore. I'm sorry if this field has any sentimental value to you, but I'm sorry, it's not yours, and you can't stop me from riding on it if I have perfect permission. So, um, that's the end of my story. I know it wasn't the most action-packed story. Um, I maybe didn't tell it the most action-packed, but I hope you guys enjoyed, and, um, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.